March 15th, 2018. From El Cajon, California, this is episode 149. You can bet on that. Hi, everybody. Welcome to You Can Bet On That, a podcast for the recreational camper. My name is Mark Duvall, and sitting across from me is Dr. Mike. Hello. Dr. Mike, I want to apologize. Yes. Now, on the last episode, okay. I was trying to make the point that maybe you don't have like all the new fancy gadgets and electronics. Which and, I don't. You know, that. And so you may not. And the phrase that I was trying to come up with was technologically challenged. Okay. But what came out of my mouth was technically clueless. <laughs> All right. So I didn't even catch that. But the other some difference there, Mark. There is a difference there. And I'm not saying I was wrong, but that's not what I meant to say. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what I meant to say was technologically really challenged. challenged. All right. And so I want to apologize. Yeah, when I was, in today's uh, PC world, uh-huh. you know, I yeah, you need to apologize to me. My feelings were hurt. <laughs> I was gonna say I can tell. I might never play craps again. That's how bad oh, I Oh, <laughs> well, you just took a turn there for the, the dark side. The and, dark yeah. side of me. <laughs> no, I just, that, that's how technically challenged I am. I didn't even catch that, that you said that. I, no, now, see, you combined it. I you know. Said I t- well, that's what I mean, technically, <laughs> because okay. I technically couldn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you are back from Horseshoe, Southern Indiana. It, it just uh, like less than a week before you were to leave, they reopened, I think, right. the Sunday before you The Sunday you, before. Uh, we, we got there Thursday night. They opened yeah. the Sunday before that. That's great. Yeah. So tell us about your trip. Well, first, I guess I should tell about the hotel, the conditions. Oh, yeah. What was it like? It was... Well, I'll tell you what. There was a lot of mud. <laughs> uh, yeah. They were still getting mud out of the um, parking structure. And it's like a four or five story parking structure. The mm-hmm. first two floors were full of mud. Yeah. Where the river had actually gone to the second level. Yeah. And then, you know, after it receded, it just left all this mud. Mm-hmm. When we were pulling into the casino, into the hotel part, there's like a little ditch. And there's still water in there. And there was a couch floating along. You know? <laughs> so that's how bad it was. And mm-hmm. a lot of the houses heading up to the casino that are along the river there mm-hmm. had big piles of junk, you know, out in the yard, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. for pickup, stuff that just got ruined that they yeah. had to throw out, yeah. which was sad to see. Sure. Because they're not the nicest houses. So right? the, it's not the It's not, not the a high end area. It's people get really hurt. Yeah. When, not the kind of houses that could withstand that kind of. Uh, right. Right. Flood, well, yeah. and, and that kind of loss because, yeah. you know, they lose their furniture and stuff. It's not like they probably have the money to go out and just buy new stuff. Yeah. So yeah. that's really sad. Yeah. But the casino itself was okay. It's a boat. Sure. So it was okay. Where the boat meets the structure that you walk through to get to the hotel, so that was pretty badly damaged. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, because maybe because the boat that, lifted that is, up and well, and, yeah, and water all went into that. That's on dry land. Oh, I see what you're saying. So okay. it connects the boat to the hotel and uh-huh. where the restaurants are and all that. Okay. And there was a lot of damage there. A lot of the walls were tore up, so they were drying things out. They had it opened, and the first day that I was there, the escalators did not work. Mm-hmm. And so you had to walk down the stairs. And I'll tell you, I am way out of shape. I mean, coming back up those stairs after you've been, you know, gambling till 2.30 a.m., uh, it's rough. It is. <laughs> I needed those escalators. <laughs> and it was a small, narrow stairway. And so there was a guard at the top, and he would hold the people up while you walked up. And then when you got up there, he would let people go down. It wasn't oh, wide enough for saying. people okay. to, you know. Okay, I got you. And it was still wet. The oh. carpet was still wet. Uh-huh. So it was like they didn't want people falling or anything, but you needed to have that to get from the hotel to the casino you had to go down that what did they have a lot of fans going or so they had a ton of fans going and they cut walls and you know there were construction guys there the whole time still working clean but it was the casino was fine okay i mean you know it's a boat so i guess it withstood all the water raising up it's funny because I was talking with one of the listeners I met. When you go in the casino, sometimes you enter on deck two, mm-hmm. sometimes you enter on deck three, depending on uh, oh, the, how the river's up or down. Uh-huh. So the first day, it was deck two. Uh-huh. And then it rained a little bit. It snowed, actually, and then rained. And I guess the river rose a little bit. And so the next day, it was deck three. Well, mm-hmm. the craps tables are on deck three. So the first day I go in, I got to go up one level, <laughs> take the escalator up. I play craps, right? So the second day I enter on deck three, 
not even looking that I'm on deck three because <laughs> it's just like you just walk in, right? Yeah, uh-huh. And I'm like, I walk in and I go up one level and I'm on deck four. And I'm like, look, at, where are the craps tables? <laughs> this doesn't look the same. <laughs> and then I realized, and then one of the listeners pointed out to me that, oh, yeah, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's two, you know, depends on the river. Boy, that was rough. You you did get a lot of exercise, didn't you? I got a lot of that going up and down the stairs and escalators. Now, how was the hotel itself? Did you see the damage ho- there? Yeah, or? oh yeah, there was oh. quite a bit. The first, well, the first level where you entered the valet was all tore up. And uh-huh. As a matter of fact, the first two days we were there, it was closed. The third day it actually opened, so okay. we could valet the car again. Uh-huh. But there was tons of construction. I mean, yeah, yeah. it was not pleasant for those valet guys, and it was very <laughs> cold, and the windows were out, and the yeah. it was not a good situation. Yeah. And the pool was closed because sure. it's on that level too. And the guy said, basically, it's just full of mud. <laughs> and it's yeah. going to be a long time until the pool gets open. Yeah. But the rest of the hotel was fine, you know, okay. upstairs. You know, we were on floor seven. It's a nice hotel, really. They've got really nice suites. We had two suites that adjoined. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we opened the door and the kids had their own one. And oh, we good. had one. Yeah, so yeah. that was very nice. Good. So the first night we got there, Thursday night, we checked in. Oh, it was like 5.30 or 6, and we ate, and then I said, you know, let's. I'm going to go down to the casino. Uh-huh. So I went down and immediately started playing craps oh, on, uh-huh. on deck three, uh-huh. okay? <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and there's this guy comes up, and he buys in next to me, and he's talking to me, and, you know, pretty soon we're chatting about craps. Real mm-hmm. nice guy, very mm-hmm. nice. Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, craps player. We kind of gambled pretty much the same way. Mm-hmm. We're talking and talking, and... Finally, he he looks at me and he says, now, where are you from? Because I had asked him and Mm -hmm. he's actually from somewhere in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And I said, San Diego. And he looked at me and he said, I think I owe you a well drink. (laughs) (laughs) And I was laughing. Anyway, it was Jeff, one of our listeners, who said he was going to be there, but he he said he wasn't going to get there till midnight. That's what Uh, he had told you. Okay, yeah, that's true. And well, what it was is he was supposed to work. Right. And he, and his and email, he said he was going to work. He wouldn't be there till he midnight. He wouldn't be there to midnight because he had a job at 930. Yeah. He is a driver uh-huh. and he had a job, but he, he decided he really wanted to get there earlier just in case I didn't make it up that late, Okay, which, you know, is silly because of course <laughs> I'm going to be up. <laughs> but he came earlier, uh-huh. not expecting to find me yet. So yeah, he just, just, and it just happened that we're right next. I mean, we were next to each other playing for a good hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he's like, I think I owe you a well drink. I'm like, I <laughs> sent you his picture. I know. But I, you know, I said you that just, you know what he looked but like. But you said midnight, so I mean, uh, at, right, you at just eight shut o'clock, off. your brain yeah, just shut I, off. At eight o'clock, I was like not thinking it. Around midnight, I would have looked at my phone and thought, well, "Where is that guy?" <laughs> okay. But anyway, super nice guy. He he has an interesting thing. You're gonna like this. Okay. So on the come out, he bets all the hard ways. Okay. Which I working. tell you, you should do. Yeah. Right. He has them working <laughs> if you're on the come it. out. All right. Yeah. It, it's fifteen dollars. Fifteen. He puts fifteen. Okay. He puts two dollars. On the hard eight, okay. Two dollars on the hard six, yeah. Two dollars on the hard four, so that's six, right? Then he has nine dollars on the hard ten, okay. And it'll be like six for him, three for the dealers. All right, nice. Okay. okay. So if a seven comes on the come out, he just replaces it fifteen dollars and okay. replaces uh-huh. it. If a hard way hits, he parlays it all to the ten. Okay. He takes maybe, I think he took like $5 back for himself and a couple dollars for the dealers and then put all the rest of it back on hard 10. Okay. So if a six hits, all goes to hard 10. Uh-huh. Then if an eight hits, all goes to hard 10. Okay. And his thing is he wants them all to hit and the 10 to be the last one. <laughs> yeah. And he's built it up and he hits that hard 10. For yeah. whatever reason, Jeff likes the hard the 10. The hard 10, all right. I think it worked out a couple of times. What, the hard 10 came up after, hard, another after another one? After another one, yeah. Oh, okay, and good. I think once maybe two of them came up and then the hard 10, so he had quite a bit oh, on okay. it. all right. But yeah, it's interesting. It was fun. I thought, sure, you know, uh, it's kind of fun. You know, he's piling it all on one. Yeah, it's, just hoping to you catch know, the, it. And people, some people say, oh, spread it out on all of them. <laughs> right, right. Some people collect it. And, you know, yeah. I just parlay the one that hits. Yeah. But I was thinking, that'd be kind of fun. You know, whatever, you know, if a four hits, just pile it all on the eight yeah, or something, yeah, right? Yeah. And hope for that hard eight. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so that was Jeff's deal. Okay. And it was good and um i guess he goes there frequently enough that the dealers knew him oh good dealers Uh knew him yeah Yeah. so that's how the the weekend started Mm -hmm. and it was great so so i went to bed thursday night and it was still down a little bit Mm -hmm. but it was not bad and you know it was it was decent friday got up friday morning and i thought well we don't have to be anywhere till about two in the afternoon 
Right. So we ate breakfast and I said, I'm going to go play. And the girls, I don't know, I can't remember. Well, you know, did. let me cut you off there. You're talking about eating breakfast. What was the smoking situation oh, like okay. there? So, because yeah. last time you it, were there, you, the girls couldn't go with you into certain restaurants, right? right? And the same this time. It was the same. It has not changed. It was the same. Yeah. The first night we tried to eat at the steak place. That was our intention. We wanted to have a nice steak dinner the first night. Uh-huh. And uh, they had given me $200 food credit. Okay. Plus I had a nice. ton of points. Yeah. So we were just going to go to the steak place no got to be 18 or over one of our listeners had said it had changed it, it yeah well that's not what yeah, we unless found. i misremembered no somebody did that? yeah they said it changed but, and i had told lynn we were kind of happy about that because yeah. we're like oh good we're gonna go to that steak place because everyone talks about how good it is yeah and i thought okay well let's have a nice steak dinner no we couldn't, couldn't get the kids it. in uh, so we, we we ate at the buffet the whole time okay <laughs> yeah we and the buffet actually is pretty decent all right i was pretty happy they had a you know how they'll have like an omelet thing where they make you fresh eggs sure. or something mm-hmm. yep. they had somebody on a grill making fresh sandwiches so you could get like a reuben oh wow made oh fresh. that's nice what in the morning they were making breakfast type stuff mm-hmm. sure you know like waffles pancakes freshly cooked not you know you had to wait a little bit but the sandwiches were great he made me this huge reuben. Ruben. I mean, it oh, was, good. you know, and I thought the buffet was actually very decent well, that's and, and good. not that expensive. As seven stars, did you get uh, two free buffets? No, or? no, we did not get two free buffets. We got four. Oh, nice. Four so the whole buffets. family was able to eat yeah, for free. Yeah, all four of us through seven stars. Free. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's I had to, great. Good. I had to pay for my mother in law a couple times. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But you know, it's a great deal you oh, know, good, to, good. to get four free. Yeah, that's great. Now it opens at 11, I think. And you can only get the four free until like four in the afternoon or oh, something. Oh, okay. So yeah, I got you. Yeah. Prime time at night, they don't give you four free. Oh, okay. But, but still. Yeah, but still, uh, yeah. the lady said, well, just come like right before four. <laughs> yeah. You know, and have an early switch dinner. It over. Oh, yeah. Good. yeah. All so, right. So anyway, yeah, back to, you're talking about Friday. So yeah, I got up Friday morning, went down to the, oh, you know, let me reverse a little bit. Okay. <laughs> so when Jeff was there on Thursday night, Night, there was a situation where actually it was my chips. The shooter was on the other side of the table from me rolling, mm-hmm. rolled the dice. And I usually separate my chips pretty good. But in this case, for whatever reason, I had my odds kind of close to my line bet. Right, which and they so, sometimes a dealer will move that. Right, so that, yeah, the die does not get like caught between, caught between the two, the stacks. two uh-huh. stacks. Right, right, exactly, right. And, and land weird. Okay, or something. but yours were a little Mine too were close. a little too close. All right, and, and at, you know, I mean, I just wasn't even thinking about it. Yeah. But anyway, the die landed, and the stick person immediately said seven out, and mm-hmm. I said no, 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 wait. Because honestly, if you, it was perfectly between my two chips. <laughs> uh-huh. And if you had moved my line bet, uh-huh. it's a seven out. Okay. But if you move my odds bet. Which should have been further away to begin with, which is should your have been argument. Further away, but okay. they were too close. <laughs> uh-huh. Then it was not a seven out. It was like an eight. Or no, excuse me. It was like a six. Because uh-huh. I had a hundred dollar hard eight. Okay. So the box person was a lady named Angie. Mm-hmm. She was excellent, Good, by the way. Mm-hmm. I mean, friendly, nice, very good. So Angie gets up mm-hmm. and she looks at it from her box position. Yeah. Then she actually leaves her box position and comes around the side of the table, stares at it from the side and says, it could go either way. Mm-hmm. She said, it's almost directly in between them. Mm-hmm. And she said, so if everyone's okay, no roll. Oh, okay. That was her thing. Yeah. That way the casino's not getting ripped off. Right. We're not getting ripped off. It's just no roll. Yeah. Everyone's, of course, you know. Sure. Next roll, hard eight. Nice. <laughs> so, you know, I benefited $900 from her call. And yeah, it, wow. And even before that happened, I, I looked at her and said, you are 100% correct. That's perfect customer service. Yes. She made everyone happy. And then they were all happy when, you know, because I had some for the dealers on sure, there Sure, on too. the hard way, good. Yeah, so when yeah. they got the hard eight, they were pretty happy. Good. But anyway, that was Angie. If anyone from Southern Indiana Casino is listening, she is... A valued employee. Oh, very good. Yeah, <laughs> she's a great employee. But the next morning I got up, I went down. It was early, before nine o'clock, I think. They had only had one table open. But anyway, I was playing. There was a guy there who was rolling. He was obviously a, a local. Everyone knew him. He knew all the dealers. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he got the dice and proceeded to make five numbers to the fire. Five point fire. Five, five point fire. Nice. All he needed was an eight. Yeah. Okay, I had twenty five dollars on the fire, which is the max. There. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, boy, it's, it's you don't see many places like no. that. Usually, had, ten is usually like the max. Ten. I had so you had twenty five on there. Oh my gosh! And the shooter, he had twenty five, uh-huh. and there were a couple people with ten dollars. 
Okay. Anyway, he made five to the fire. Uh huh. He just needed an eight. Okay. And so I'm thinking, come on, an eight. Right. You That's want, when you... I texted you uh-huh, and I texted I got... my wife uh-huh. and I said, all we need is an eight. Yeah. So he picks up the dice. He's coming out. He rolls them. Eight. <laughs> wow. It's like a five three. And to get on that sixth number. And I was like, oh my God, you know, we're on the sixth number. This is $25,000. Yeah. And he needs an eight. It's yeah. not like a four or a 10, you know, <laughs> right. or something. Right. Or or when you're waiting for the all tall, small, and you need a two. Right, right. You know, sure, it might come, but you know, <laughs> yeah. <I> probably won't. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's an eight. So we're all as excited as hell. The table is pretty full. It was the only table open. Mm-hmm. Up walks this guy. <laughs> yeah. He kind of pushes his way in, too. Yeah. It's not like he was easily, you know, in. kind of crammed in between two people, throws $500 down on the table. Change only. Yeah. Yeah. So it stops the game. They, you know, they count out the five. They give him his 500. It actually went pretty fast. Okay, it wasn't sure. slow because, you know, they gave him. But, you know, sure. they got to give him 400 in green. Then they put 100 <laughs> in red out. They take 10 of them back, give him 10 ones. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, the whole deal. And the pit looks at, okay, yeah, give yep. him the five. So then the shooter in disgust, you know, looking, <laughs> sitting there, and he was kind of close to the shooter too. It was on his side. I was on the other side of the table. He picks up the dice, rolls seven out. <laughs> we were so mad. And, and you know, I told this story to somebody today uh-huh. and they said, oh, that casino shill. They <laughs> casino sent him over. Sh- and, and I, I know there are people who believe that. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm laughing with you. I'm sure you were mad. And I would have been mad, too, yeah. even though I know it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But the it's problem just, is people are superstitious. And right. when it does happen, it's like, right. why did you do that? If you hadn't done <laughs> that, right. it would have been different. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, that's what you're thinking. If you're buying him for 500, you've played craps before. Yeah. It's not like that's a guy. That's true. It's not something it's not like that doesn't 40 know that bucks he shouldn't down buy in and, and right. overall, right? So he probably knew he shouldn't be doing that. Or he wasn't thinking, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever, it was seven out. Yeah. And right at that time, it's like 10 o'clock. They paid us. Now, yeah. it still paid pretty good. Yeah, I, sure. It's over $6,000. Yeah. So at this point, I'm up like $10,000. Yeah. But anyway, the next table was opening, and the shooter and I moved over to that table. Mm-hmm. But him and I moved over there, and we just kept talking about, oh, can you believe that? I mean, we were this close to $25,000. <laughs> yeah. no, he was a cooler. They sent him over. Yeah, cooler. <laughs> we started playing. It was going actually pretty good. And then listener Brian showed up. Mm-hmm. And uh, very nice guy. We had some. We actually ended up leaving that table both ahead for that second table. Good. So I was going back to the room kind of on a high note. I was up quite a bit. Uh, Brian was real nice. I invited him to go to lunch with us. That's why we had to leave. Finally, Lynn's like, oh, the girls want lunch. (laughs) Yeah. You know, before we had to leave at two. He had already eaten, so he didn't eat lunch with us. But he met (laughs) met the girls and everything. We had a good time. (laughs) Good. So then we went. We had wedding stuff to do. Yeah. Come back that night. And I'm playing on deck three. Right. And the tables were pretty crowded. Mm -hmm. There were four tables. Three of them were open. And I I was talking to one of the dealers and I said, well, do they open that fourth table? And he goes, well, probably not Friday night. You know, a lot of times the fourth one will open when we're like a busy Saturday night or like when the Kentucky Derby's in, you know, that Mm -hmm. weekend Mm -hmm. or whatever. And then he said, said, but you can always just go upstairs to the high limit table. And I'm like, what? Really? <laughs> yeah. So on deck four, back yeah. in the corner by the Diamond Lounge, which is up there, they have a high limit room. And I had kind of seen it, but you have to walk all the way to it to see there's a craps table because it's off in the corner. Uh-huh. I didn't actually go. I just kind of like went a little way, saw the Diamond Lounge, saw a bunch of blackjack tables. Yeah. And just assumed well, high well, limit. Well, how often do you see a craps table in a high limit room? I mean, very, very rarely. rarely. I've yeah, seen that's... it maybe twice before. Yeah. Anyway, up there, it's a non-smoking. Now it's twenty five dollars. Okay, they have hundred times odds. Yeah. So the first night, the tables were all ten bucks, and you know, so I'm betting ten with a lot of odds. Yeah. Up there, I got to bet twenty five with yeah, a yeah. lot of odds. So yeah. you're putting a little more out there, but it's in this nice little corner, super quiet. There was like maybe six people playing. Ah. You know, very nice surroundings, non-smoking. So I love that. That's great. Unfortunately, I didn't get up there till like after. 10 30 mm-hmm. because in oh it only opened that high limit one is only open on fridays and saturdays opens at eight and they told me it goes until it dies down yeah, nobody sure. wants to play anymore. sure sure so i guess i got up there at 10 30 because i didn't know about it but at eight o'clock right when it opened 
The guy who shot the five on the fire uh-huh. shot five on the fire up there. You blew it, Mike. The same day. You blew it. The same day, Mark. <laughs> upstairs shot five on the fire again. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. And and I guess I got up there. He was just leaving. He had shot five. And then two shooters later, somebody made a four. Mm. They were It all cleared out because yeah, they had they won. They won a, and they're good. They're going to go you celebrate. Know, they're six, seven thousand dollars and they're off. So anyway, I went up there and it did not go so well. Oh, oh. So as it turned out over the course of the weekend, uh, you know, went all the way back to Eve and oh. lost all my Oh, all my that's too bad yeah. after that fire but it, bed. But hit. it was fun good. and good. And I guess that was Friday. So then Saturday morning I went down and played before we had to leave for the wedding. Mm-hmm. And uh, listener Matt was there. Mm-hmm. And it did not go well for Matt and I. Oh. I. The table was colder than heck. Yeah. I mean, he got there and I had already gone through. I was getting ready to leave. Yeah. And then he got there and I thought, okay, well, I'll play some more. And, you know, we talked and he, very nice. And finally I went to get more money and Matt disappeared and turned out he played some blackjack and okay. he said he did okay. But, but anyway, and then we met him, he was staying at the hotel. He was on the same floor as us. Oh, good. So we met him up at the hotel, but anyway, a couple more things I want to mention okay. real quick. Yeah. The dealers in the high limit room were William Beverly and Brandy. They were all excellent dealers. Good. Yeah. Well, I would hope so they, if they're yeah. on the high limit table. They must have put, you know, some of their sharper dealers. And they, the pit was named Lynn, mm-hmm. like my wife. Mm-hmm. She was a hoot. Yeah. She yeah. She she was just talkative and chatty mm-hmm. and she made it very entertaining. And also her relief was a guy named Billy, and he was very good too, because he was into horse racing. We talked a lot about horse okay. racing and stuff and craps. And they were very engaging, you know. It wasn't a moment where we weren't talking about something. And, yeah. and I think at one point it was like Beverly who I made like something and she said, Oh, I thought that was a three way. And one of the other dealers said something, Oh, Beverly, you're, you're just so into three ways. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and she, it was so funny because she said something like, um, it's been like 10 years. <laughs> and then she hesitates. She's okay. Maybe two. <laughs> it was, kind of, yeah, it was pretty great. funny. And, um, anyway, I just want to say that it's this great casino. Another I, good I trip. Had, yeah. You, you didn't, had, didn't win big like last time, but at least no, you had a good time. Yeah. I had a very good time. I didn't lose a huge amount or anything. And it was very, you know, they're very friendly. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's the thing I like. They're very friendly. And that high limit room was excellent. That's great. It was so nice. I wish Harris Rincon would have that. Well, I, I wish they anybody have, would have. I, I, Mike, I don't know that I have seen a craps table in a high limit room. Well, no. We There's one at uh, in Vegas at one of the places... Okay. Remember, it was like, I can't remember, but I remember seeing one. Okay. But it wasn't open when we went by there. All right. Well, welcome home. Yep. Thank you. Yep. So I had a little adventure too this last weekend. Not nearly as interesting, but let me tell you what happened. So my wife, Sherry, went to an animal care conference because, you know, she works at the animal Animal shelter shelter. and it was up in Long Beach. And so I went up with her that first night and stayed over just kind of on the weekend. And that Sunday, she had some classes that she needed to go to. And she Uh said, well, why don't you go to a casino close by? Is there a casino close by? Yeah, of course. And I think I'll I'll find one. I I think I'll find one. Even if it's not close. (laughs) So I had a few hours and I thought, okay, you know what? I'd kind of like... Now, there there isn't a full-blown casino. It's basically just card rooms. Card rooms, right. You know, in the LA area. You have to right. go a little bit out of LA before you actually go to a, a real tribal casino where they have the real games. Right. So it was mostly just uh, yep, card rooms. So I decided, well, first I'm going to go to Hustler Casino okay. because I'd never been there. I don't think you've been there either. No, have haven't you? been there. We've heard of it. Right. And I thought, you know, maybe I can find an Omaha 8 game which okay. is my favorite poker game to play. And I was looking online and they said, oh, we specialize in you know having an Omaha game. So they always have an Omaha game. Uh, well, no, they don't. Oh, because okay. I got there and they didn't have one going. Okay. That's very typical of most casinos. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So I go in. I'd never been before. It was a little smaller than I thought it was going to be. About half the casino was poker tables. And then the other half were table games. Everybody's familiar with like Let It Ride and Blackjack and, and right. Three card poker but because they're card rooms because they're not tribal casinos the house is not allowed to bank right we've talked about this before so players were banking yeah now were the banks large they were very large this was obviously some syndicate very well organized because you could go up to the table immediately knew who the bank was they'd have tons of chips in front of right Right. so it's a syndicate that's banking yeah but basically basically, yeah, yeah yeah So, you know, I asked, oh, you have an Omaha game going? And he said, oh, no, but, you know, we could start a, a list for interest. And, you know, there was no list or anything. I said, well, I'm not going to put my name in now yeah. and, and wait. 
Just give them your cell number and your name. <laughs> they call you two days later. Yeah, we got that Omaha game. You still interested? Because if you're not interested, it won't start. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's only three of you. <laughs> so I said, no. And I'm thinking, well, gosh, I'm already here. Should I play some Hold'em? And then I thought, no, I don't want to play stupid Hold'em. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know right. right? So That's I, for rookies. So I thought, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to a different casino. So I'm going to head mm-hmm. over to the Gardens Casino. Okay. Is that in Garden Grove? It's in Hawaiian Gardens. Hawaiian Gardens. Yeah, and you and I have been there once. Oh, I don't know okay. if you remember. Uh, we we actually went there. It used to be called Hawaiian Gardens, oh, and now okay. it's just called the Gardens. Yeah, all right. I thought it was in Garden Grove. I don't no, know. No, no, Hawaiian which Gardens, which is not is too far from. from. So I am heading towards the Gardens Casino. Okay. I'm, I'm on the freeway, and I look off to the side, and there's this huge building that says Crystal Casino and Hotel. Okay, it's like oh. Uh, well, I haven't heard of that. Well, I mean, it's right here. It's right off the freeway. I better go check it out. So I pull off the freeway, and I drive over to it, and I'm pulling up, and this place, it's like, oh, my gosh, this, this is a casino? Is it, is it abandoned? <laughs> yeah. is, it, is it open? And I go around to the parking area, and the parking lot is just, you know, there are beer bottles everywhere, and the oh my pavement is all, you know, torn up, and they, geez, what's going on? So I park, and... You know, I start walking towards the door, and I don't think I'm coming through the main entrance. I'm like on a side door. Okay. And the side door, there's like, there's no signage at all. It's like if you were to walk up to an abandoned department store. Right. And you just see the doors there, right? Now, now what possesses you to keep going at well, this Well, I know point? this. <laughs> That's I, what I'm thinking. I, well, I'm thinking, I'm here. I've got to see what, what's you know in store for me. I may I'm not challenged? make it out alive. You think I'm challenged? <laughs> <laughs> so, the, I mean, the only sign, and as I get up, I'm thinking, should I go in? The only sign is, you know, something about you have to be 21 to enter the casino. So, okay, so I go in, and to call this place a dump would be an insult to dumps. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I open the door, and it's just this huge open space of just carpet with nothing there. Uh-huh. And then I, I kind of go in, and it's like, okay, this is a bingo area. No bingo going on. I don't know if they have bingo. I had to walk a, a real long ways, and finally I got to the tables. And, you know, like Hustler, it, they had table games, a lot of Asian games uh-huh. going on, you right. know, things banking. But it just looked like it was some abandoned building where they just set up some tables, tables in the corner. Oh, my gosh. Mark, this sounds like something out of Deer Hunter. <laughs> Okay, so I mean, I would have, I would have ran. I wouldn't have even have parked. I would have been like, okay, I'm not getting out of here. This right. is the place where the guy kills you for 38 cents. You got I know. So I was, bling. I was very careful, but I got out of there, got back into my car, which was still there. Luckily, did you play it all? The, oh no. no, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, I, once you weren't that crazy. No, no. And apparently there, what I didn't see actual poker tables, but apparently maybe I missed them. I was reading online. It's like, how much time do I? Want? So really, so I was, what would the what did the clientele look like? You were playing. Well, I don't know. It didn't look just look like normal people. Yeah, it looked like normal people. Well, where so. were their cars parked in the parking lot? That's a good question. Mate, there might have been valet. I mean, yeah. there were cars in the parking right. lot. Oh, it's just, okay. you know, I it's it wasn't just, like you're the only car. No, no, no. But <laughs> you know, it's obvious nobody had cleaned up the parking lot. I'm getting a, a little time. scared. <laughs> well, I <laughs> just hearing this. I know. <laughs> I got out of there really more concerned for is my car gonna be there when right, I get back, right? right. So yeah. That was the thing. Or is there gonna be eight guys sitting on the hood? <laughs> hey. Yeah. So I got back to my car, got back on the freeway, and continued on to <laughs> gardens. <laughs> the lesson here is no matter how much you want to see a new casino. It said casino. <laughs> I can see it from the freeway. And, you know, seriously, as I'm pulling in, it's like, is this really a casino? Is there uh, some name? Right. Right. You know, it's just like casino clams. <laughs> <laughs> So, Mark, it's like snowballs. They say less fat on them, but they're snowballs, okay? <laughs> so finally, I end up at Gardens, which is a very nice casino. I'll tell you, I think you and I went there maybe 20 years yeah, ago. I, and it had to be a long yeah, time Yeah, it was ago. unrecognizable. Just great in there. Okay. And I went in, a uh, big poker room, very big poker room. Yeah. I look, and they don't have any Omaha going, but they have Big O. And okay. for those who are not familiar, Big O is exactly like Omaha, except all the players get five cards. You get five right. down cards. Right. Otherwise, it works just like Omaha. You have to use two from your hand and three on the board. Yeah. So they had Big O, high, low going. They actually had no Omaha games. What was the limits on that? Four, eight. Oh, okay. Not with bad. a kill. Not with bad. a full kill. Oh, with a full kill. Uh-huh. So, I- so I signed up. There were like six or seven people on a waiting list, and it was 
perfect timing because since there were so many there, they just opened up a whole new game. Wow. So it just opened up right there. That's nice. This was a juicy game. I had been watching beforehand some of these plays. Oh, my God. Mike, nobody was folding before the flop. Really? Nobody. Other than, really? than, than me. you. Yeah, yeah. I was the Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was so... And I was only able to play there for an hour, but what a juicy game. And yeah. that I was really only involved in about two hands. One was a kill. Oh, So it was nice. playing 8-16. Yeah. I had pocket aces and something else, and I yeah. flopped an ace... So I had, you know, a set of aces. Right. You're looking for full house four of a kind. A full house four of a kind. It turns out I get runner, runner, flush, oh, nut nice. flush. There's nice. no possible full house in there and no low. Yeah. And somebody went with me the whole way. So wow. I scooped a huge, huge pot. pot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that's all you need to do is yeah. play one hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I had to kill the next hand. The kill. So uh, again, a kill game is where in Omaha, if you scoop a pot, which is normally a split pot game, right. if you scoop a pot, and in this particular game, it had to be at least $60. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. Because you don't want to scoop a small yeah, pot. There were plenty of people who were scooping small pots and didn't have to kill because it was under yeah. $60. But if the pot you win is $60 or more and you scoop, then the next hand is a kill and you have to put out a kill blind. And right. I don't, so I you gotta, you're got you forced to bet. You're forced to bet, so yes. The $8. Yeah. So, but not much happened and then i had to go but uh, oh yeah it was great so yeah. i uh, oh, kind of nice. scratched well, my well at least you found yeah. a place to play and you played to hand and you had yes. good luck uh, yes i had so, good luck and, and you came home virtually in one piece yes physically yeah. i was okay, okay and, yeah. and i did <laughs> you weren't violated at any point or anything <laughs> that's right i think the other hand i was involved in, i think it was a similar thing where, where i flopped trip aces again but then by the river, there were like four cards to a straight out there. And, you know, oh, this is yeah. big O, right? People right. have so many cards. Oh, and, yeah. and a guy who hadn't been betting suddenly bets out. So I knew right. he had the straight. And had to you know, it's funny when bad players will stick out with the trips or something. And that yeah. you've got five cards and there's so many players. I mean, somebody made that straight. Somebody made that yeah, full I, house. Somebody made that flush. Especially in a game like Omaha. And one thing that you have to fight as a new poker player is... That sense of entitlement when you start with a great right, hand, right, and it just you feel like you should win this hand, and so you make these angry calls at the end, and then right. you're beat, and right? You're beat. So and you yeah. know you're beat. That's, yes, the, that's thing, the thing is you know you're beat, yep. and you're still making the call because yep. you had such a good starting yep, hand, yep. and you can't get through your head that. Yeah, it was good, but it sucks now. Yeah, right. I think that's a leak in a lot of people's games. Yeah, so, it is a yeah. big leak in a lot of yeah. people's game. We should actually, at some episode in the future, talk about some of the things like that that people. Mm, that's good. Yeah, are hard poker. to get hard to get through your head. Yeah, and and we're kind of all guilty of that sometimes. Sure, as gamblers, of yeah, course. Yeah, so we get emotional yeah, about it. Yeah, right. Okay, one quick news item before we get to the phone calls. Uh, locally here in town, there is a Hollywood casino that has been managed by Penn National. And it's connected to all the Hollywood Hollywood's, casinos yeah. in, in the, the Tropicana, country. Tropicana, Las Vegas. Tropicana, Las Vegas, M Resort. Well, right. within this these last two weeks, Penn National has pulled out of this Hollywood casino. You and I have talked about on a previous episode, this is a casino that has been struggling. Yes. All you had to do was go out there. You could tell it was struggling. Right, right. It was a controversial casino because of where it was built. Right. It's, the, the people who live in that area yeah, it's did a, not want it. It's a rural area, and it's not rural like some of these other tribal casinos where it's really off a ways. Right. This is, you know, right on, going well, there, by people's homes. There's and, a house across the street. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, pretty much across the street. So anyway, they're pulling out, and I guess it's just going to be renamed the Hamul Casino or whatever. We'll yeah. see if they can survive. I don't have very high mm. hopes. Well, remember they used to have a casino up in um, near Julian, uh, yes, San was it Isabel. San Isabel, yeah, yeah, and it did not do well. Well, number one, it was way far away from too far er- away. Where, uh, everything, yeah. and the road to get there was mountainous. Yes, I mm-hmm. mean it wasn't like a little mountain; it was mountainous. Mm-hmm. In wintertime, who in their right mind would drive sure, up there? Right, yeah. So that had that problem, but it also had the problem of being just a, not affiliated with anything mm-hmm. and local, and they, you mm-hmm. know, they couldn't give away a lot of comps or giveaways or things. You know, yeah. they were giving a lot of stuff away. At Hollywood. I wonder if that will continue. We will see. I don't know if that was Penn Nationals doing, but we've mentioned this before. A lot yeah. of the stuff they gave away is just was terrible. Junky. It was as junky, opposed yeah. to Harris Rincon, yeah. which the giveaways are actually very nice. Yeah, right now they're giving away just some kitchen appliances so and, and, pa- and, and, they're, and they're high quality. They're, they're great. Very yeah. high quality. Yeah. They're good pans. They're the kind of pans you'd buy. Yes. Uh-huh. The stuff at Hollywood was kind of stuff like, oh, I got this free. I used it twice and it fell apart. Yeah, it's exactly. And, but right, it was yeah. free. You it's know? Like a toy. So, yeah, yeah, it's like a toy. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks to everyone who's been clicking through our Amazon link. Remember, whenever you're going to buy something through Amazon, please go to our page first. You can bet on that.com and click through our Amazon link towards the top of the page. All right. Let's get to 
the phone calls. Remember, call our voicemail hotline at 951-292-4377. That's 9512-WAGERS. 9512-WAGERS. And maybe we'll play your clip on the show. First up is Cody. Hey guys, this is Cody from Alabama giving a tunica trip report and then also going to try to explain a previous caller from at least two shows ago that had mentioned taking his wife to tunica for a birthday weekend and that turning out to not be a good idea. I think what the caller is trying to explain is if you haven't ever been to Tunica, it's hard to really explain how far in the middle of nowhere that Tunica actually is. Um, you're talking about hundreds of acres of cotton fields that you drive through and then all of a sudden, you know, here's a small little, you know, one or two red light town that has seven or eight casinos in it. You know, it is 35 to 40 minutes away from Memphis, which is nice, you know, if you want to drive up uh, after you've got done playing at the casino or you've, you know, down in your luck or you want a lot of money, you want to go into town and spend it. But, you know, Memphis is not just next door. You know, it still is a quite a lengthy drive. But when you actually get into Tunica, you know, the way that the town is spread out is there are three casinos side by side, which is an MGM property, and then two Harris properties. And then you have to drive seven or eight miles in town to get to the other set of casinos. So, you know, if your wife is not a hardcore gambler, she's not going to have a great time if you're there for multiple nights. My suggestion is if you're going to take your wife, or your girlfriend, significant other, that you, uh, and you're going to spend multiple nights that you need to, you know, agree to play, you know, maybe at night and then take her into Memphis or take her to some of the, uh, maybe the Mississippi River cruises or something of that nature during the day and, you know, try to come to an agreement of some kind. She's not going to have a very enjoyable time just in the town of Tunica. As far as the gambling goes, I went with a couple of friends back uh, on President's Day weekend. That's the first trip I've made there since July. And one thing to note on the craps tables, you know, the fire bet has gone away since July. It has been replaced with the all-tall, all-small. While we were playing the all-tall, all-small, did hit a couple of times, which is nice. Uh, and then, you know, we had several good rolls. The odds are in your favor as far as, a, you know, a good odds bet. I think it's 20 times odds at the MGM property and up to 100 times odds at the Harris property. So you do get a good odds bet. So the craps games are good. Uh, there's still three to two blackjack everywhere in town, uh, except for a single deck game, you know, some like six to five, but you can get three to two everywhere else. Overall, you know, pretty good trip. Came down a little bit down after playing some three card poker, but otherwise, you know, it was a, a good trip overall. So, again, if you're going to Tunica, come to an agreement with your significant other about how much time you're going to spend gambling unless she's a hardcore gambler. Yeah, he got cut off there at the three-minute mark. Uh, so I guess that explains it now. That explains Tunica. Yeah. So the question is, where do you take your wife? What gambling destination do you take your wife on oh, your anniversary? Oh, instead of Tunica? Yeah. Oh, for your anniversary. For your that's anniversary. Right, yeah. If it's your anniversary. Oh, was it, was it her birthday? It was her birthday, oh, it was her wasn't birthday. it? Yeah, yeah. Still, well, yeah. birthday, okay. anniversary, any <laughs> any significant event, which you know could be a, a bunch of different things, yeah. first date, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Where do you take them for gambling? Yeah, maybe just one of those dotty slot parlors in Las Vegas. <laughs> and the I'll tell you what, seriously though, Las Vegas has so much to offer. Oh, yes. Oh, sure. So if you go to Las Vegas, you know, your wife can get a massage and a Mm -hmm. manicure and, you know, you shop at the forum shops and, you know, there's plenty to see and do shows and whatnot. Oh, yeah. Sherry and I went once for a weekend and we didn't gamble till the last day. Right. Which is hard to believe. Hard to believe. (laughs) Kind of embarrassed now to say it on on the show. but Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe you better edit that out. (laughs) Now, weren't you telling me, though, that your wife was actually suggesting Tunica as a destination? (laughs) hear that? (laughs) Well, we were looking at places to go on vacation Uh with our timeshare thing that we have. They were all over the world. And she just, she's going down the list. She said, oh, Tunica's on here. (laughs) (laughs) We were laughing. I said, yeah, that might be okay for me, but I don't know how you and the kids would like Tunica. (laughs) Okay. Let's hear from Steve. Mark and Dr. Mike, how are you? Steve Thomas from uh, Toronto, Ontario. And uh, I met you at uh, Vegas Vacation 4 when you were limping around. And I and you played at Bally's in the D and had a great time. For uh, I'll be there at Zorkfest in Vegas, Vegas Vacation 6 coming up in May. But I just had a trip report. I just got back from Vegas from the President's Day weekend and uh, just had some observations. The fire bed is definitely dead. I didn't find any around Vegas at all. $5 tables were harder to come by, too, I found. But again, I chalked that up to the um, President's Day weekend. One interesting thing I did see at Caesars Palace, though, I've never seen before, and I wonder if you guys have seen it. They had the field bet, 
And adjacent to the field bed, there is a second kind of field bed where you can make three separate field bets if you wanted to. You can bet on the two, three, and the four, and the four, nine, and the ten, and the ten, eleven, and twelve, which was interesting. But the two, three, and four paid five to one. The four, nine, and ten paid three to one. And the 10, 11, 12 paid five to one, which I think is it's kind of interesting. Also, the fact that the four and the 10 were on two different categories. So the two, three, and four, and the four, nine, and 10. So if you bet on those two sections, you'd essentially get four at eight to one if it came up. I thought that was interesting. It was called Fielder's Choice, I think. And it was at Caesar's Palace. And I just well, I wondered if you guys had seen that before. Anyway. Thanks very much, and I uh, look forward to seeing you at Zorkfest, and uh, can't wait to play with you guys again. Thanks a lot. Bye. Yeah, this is a brand new bet. Yeah, I was going to say, I have not seen this. No, in fact, I don't think the Wizard of Odds even has a page for it yet. Oh, okay. And so this is really hot off the presses. Uh, <laughs> Breaking news yeah, here. That's you can exactly, bet on that. It's called Fielder's Choice. Let's talk about it a little bit. I want to make Just some, in time for baseball season. Yeah, exa- yeah. that's the whole thing. It's got kind of a yeah. baseball theme. I want to make some corrections, too, on some of the payouts, but let's talk about it. Yeah, it's next to the field, and okay. it's three separate bets. You don't have to bet on all three of them. You can bet on one of them, two of them, all three of them, but it's three separate one roll bets. One is called left field and it has the two, three, and four in it. Okay. One roll bet. You make a bet in there. If two, three, or four comes, comes up, up on the next roll, you win. Otherwise, you lose. Okay? okay. There's another bet called center field. It has four, nine, and ten. Again, if one of those numbers comes up on the next roll, you win. Otherwise, you lose. And finally, right field is 10, 11, 12. The same deal. Right. Now, the payouts are on left field and right field are 541 not 521 541 so if you so your $1 bet's going to win you 4 bucks yes not 5 that's right your $1 bet they'll give you $4 and you'll still have your, your $1, $1 bet right yeah that's right and then the center field bet pays 341 yeah All so right. you're only going to get 2 bucks back exactly yeah so now talking about what Steve was saying let's say you bet on left field and center field and both of them have the number 4 in them right the left field is two three four. Center field is four nine ten. Right. Okay. So if four comes up, you're going to win both. You're going to win both. Let's say you have a dollar on each one. Right. Okay. In left field, you're going to get a profit of four dollars. Right. And in center field, you're going to get a profit of two dollars. Right. So your profit is six dollars for two dollars bet. Right. That's only three to one. Yeah, it's three to one. Or four, four, one, if you want to right. you know, talk about that. Right. So it's not quite as good as you would think. think right. Now, and you're looking at kind of the layout here. It's very, it's, I think it's pretty clear how it works. Yeah, it's and, pretty clear. Yeah. I, it's funny, though, on this layout, the picture of it, the field is super small. Yeah, they've made the field real small. You can still bet the bet field, the, but it's just this thin, thin line, line that's, that's almost thinner than the, the pass, pass line. line. Yeah. You're right. And, you know, think about that. So what if somebody puts a chip out there, you know, there's kind of sloppy and it kind of overlaps? How does that? Oh, I don't. No, you could say that about a lot of things on the craps table. I know, though, but yeah. I mean, it seriously could create some controversy. No, it could. Like you put it kind of in left field and kind of in the field, yeah. the tin comes up and you're like, <laughs> no, that was a field bet, not a left field bet, <laughs> yeah. just a regular field bet. Yeah. So, Well, these bets are pretty terrible, as you might imagine side yeah, bets are. Imagine. Each of the bets, all three of them, there's a 16 and two thirds percent house edge, right. which you know makes them some of the worst bets on the table. Yeah. I, not even I'm betting that. <laughs> I just don't see it catching on. It just doesn't seem like a fun bet because it's a no. one roll bet and you know you're usually going to lose it. Right. And well, left field, you know, 2 3 4, right? <laughs> It's not going to come up. No. There's so many other... Yeah, I, th- I think people who like betting the field are just going to continue to bet the field. Right. Well, why not bet the field? I get all these. And, I get all these. You know, these, if two right. comes up, I get double, and if 12 comes up, I get triple. So. Right. And, you know, and you put five bucks in the field, you win five bucks if a nine comes up. You know, what's yeah. the difference? I mean, how many times are you going to lose it putting it in center field? Yeah. So I don't see it catching on. But it's new, and we'll see yeah. if it spreads at all. Well, it's interesting that it's at Caesar's Palace. That's definitely yeah. something we're going to have to right. check out. I'm going to ask him how much action you get on that, and yeah. I bet they say not much. But, but. Yeah, because Caesar's Palace, that's some pretty experienced gamblers. I yeah. can't imagine that get too much. Now, I could see this, you know, coming at maybe one of the smaller casinos on the street. Yeah, like I, a local casino or yeah, something. Yeah, a local I casino. I just yeah. can't see it at Caesar's yeah. Palace. It's like, you know, this is something that Steve Wynn would come up with. Oh, yeah. yeah that, that, I don't know if it's that bad. Mike. Yeah. Kind of, it actually loses money. Yeah. A dollar wins 50 cents. <laughs> That's right. Good luck. 
All right, let's hear from Tim from the new Better Life podcast. If you have a message of 20 seconds of just air, that's me calling and not hearing the beep and thinking that I did it wrong. Oh, yeah, that, that, that he did. <laughs> there was a previous <laughs> call where it's like, what, is anybody there? Is nobody there? All right. Tim Lawson from the Better Life podcast. Fellas, I'm calling with a trip report from Iowa, of all places. I was like, hey, I need to get out. Let's go on a gambling trip to Iowa. Now, I'm visiting my parents. They were off doing something. I had a couple hours to kill on a Sunday morning, and so I went up to a place called, uh, I think it's called Grand Falls Casino, and it's about uh, 20, 30 minutes east of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And I went in there just thinking I was going to find the cheapest game that I prefer and just sort of kill time for uh, for an hour or two, because what else do you, do you do when you have time to kill? I took a page out of Dr. Mike's book, and I was like, hey, I'm going to go find a craps game. Got there in the craps table. They had two craps tables. That was it. Two craps tables. Neither of them were open. It was 9.30 in the morning. And I asked someone, they said, well, the craps tables aren't opening until 11. Well, that that wasn't going to work because I had to be out of there at a certain time. It just wasn't worth waiting around to maybe get 20 minutes of craps in. So I went and I sat down at the blackjack table and paid three to two. Good. Hits on soft 17. eh. And I sit down and the guy, there's two guys playing and they look, they seem to be kind of like into it and so I, I didn't I wanted to wait uh until the shoe was over. Um and so I wait and I'm sitting there and I wait and I wait. Uh the shoe's over, I buy in and the dealer shuffles and burns the first card face down and I point out, I was like, what was that? I've done this hundreds of times at blackjack tables and usually a dealer will put it face up when they use I'm used to that. I'm used to calling them out like, hey what's that? And they'll show us. This guy was like, I can't show you. I was like, what do you mean you can't show me? He's like, I can't, I can't show you. It's against the rules. And I was sort of taken back. Guys, I need you to help me out. Am I crazy in thinking that dealers have shown me the burn card before? Because him and someone else that was there, another another casino employee, were pretty convinced that was like standard practice across the industry. I don't think that that's right. Help me out. Will dealers normally show you the burn card or not? Great show. Keep it up. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Thanks for taking my call. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Tim, we're not going to go so far as to say that you're crazy. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> that we're not psychiatrists. <laughs> that's right. That's right. But I have never, <laughs> ever seen a dealer willingly or knowingly yeah. show you the, the burn, burn card. card. No, it is neither, always face down. Neither have I. Now, maybe it happens at some places. I seem to recall asking once and they wouldn't show it. Yeah. Because they just don't show it. No, they don't. It is standard practice. practice they do not, not show, show the, the burn, burn card. card. Yeah. yeah. That's sort of the it's, point of the burn right, card in right, a lot of ways, right? Right, right. Yeah, so. for, for card counters. So yeah. there's one card missing. Yeah. It's stupid in a shoe. Oh, in a big game. shoe. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, we can't show you that burn card. You <laughs> might, yeah, it might make all the difference in the world. <laughs> a, oh, it was an ace? All right, yeah. we're reshuffling. <laughs> now, are you crazy because you've never seen that, or are you crazy because it's a stupid rule? <laughs> and, now, that's and, understandable and, if yeah. you're just thinking that's a stupid if rule. If you're thinking okay, that's a stupid rule, you're not crazy at all. It's a stupid rule. I have never seen it. No, I, I've yeah, never seen, seen them show, show the burn them. card. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know where you've been playing, Tim. Let us know. <laughs> Well, he's playing face up blackjack. That's right. Yeah, that's what he's Face up blackjack. Why not show you the burn card? Right? That's right. They're it's all double, face it's up. Double exposure blackjack. blackjack. Oh yeah, we we actually put all the cards upside down, down in the shoe, <laughs> right? So you can see the next one coming off the top. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's easy. <laughs> all right, next call. Hey, Mark and Doctor Mike. Uh, this is T from Atlanta. Hope you guys are doing well. I am heading out to Vegas this weekend guys trip that we do a couple times a year uh we're staying at cromwell we definitely like to play craps i'm really looking forward to it a couple episodes back there was a discussion about what to do with your chips if you're at a craps table and you leave to go to the restroom and it reminded me of a conversation that my friends and i have regularly and one of which my wife thinks i'm a total idiot for even having but that's another story so we, we talk about the woman back in atlantic city i don't know it was like maybe four or five even seven years ago, who had the four-hour-plus run at a craft table. And, you know, we always you know, like to dream that we are one day fortunate enough to be a part of something like that. But what we always talk about is, what would you do if you were on one of those absolutely monster runs, 
you're a good two, two and a half hours into it, and you're enjoying the free beverages, and you just can't hold it in any longer. Would you leave the table or what? And, you know, even taking that a step further, what would you do if you had the dice? Pretty much as a group, we all agree we would, you know, perhaps accidentally spill a drink on ourselves to make it look like just a pure drink spill accident and nothing else. I don't know. But I contend that I would not leave the table. And I hope to find myself in that position someday and maybe even this weekend. I'll call you guys back if I do. Anyway, and always enjoy the show. Take care. So they'd spill a drink so they could pee their pants. pants and- yeah, that, I think <laughs> that's what he was getting yeah. at. So it wouldn't look like he peed yeah, his pants. Oh, like it just spilled a oh, drink. Yeah. Now, you answer first because I know exactly what you would say. Do you do? Yeah, I think I do. Okay, well, if I were rolling, yeah. uh, seriously, I would wait till a come out roll and ask if I could go to the bathroom real quick and come exactly, back. Exactly, because we've seen people do that. Uh-huh, and, yes. we, and we've had actually recently somebody do that. Oh, I got to go so bad. Yeah. Okay, go. And they asked everyone on the table, is it okay? Yeah. You know, does anyone have a problem with that? We all said, no, go. He ran and went to the bathroom, came back and continued. Now, roll. not every casino would accommodate that. Yeah. You know, some, some casinos, some, absolutely not. Uh, this game needs to keep moving. Right. And they're all paranoid. Because right. it's you know, right. but uh, you know, if they are paranoid, it's like, oh, well, maybe this will be the this will be the cooler that right. you know that he right. has to go. So it would really depend on the casino. Right. I, you know, if they wouldn't allow it, yeah, to say nobody's got to keep rolling, then I, I would try to convince everybody at the table just pull all their bets down. Yeah. Right. So, okay, well, if you're not going to do it, let's pull all our bets down. Maybe the casino would change its mind. You know, this is a harder question for you to answer because you go to the bathroom way more. I drink a lot more at the table, but even so, even if I'm not drinking, I do go more often. Thank you for bringing that to everyone's attention. (laughs) For whatever reason, I never have to go. Yeah. I I mean, seriously. I know. You know, I'll go go seven hours and then, oh, I better go before we get on the drive home. I never have to go. But if I was rolling, or if it was in the middle of a really hot roll. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're not rolling, you could run real quick. And, sure, you know, sure. Yeah, just, you, you know, could, my bets are off while I'm right, gone or whatever. Pick whatever, up your odds. Sure, sure. You could tell them to, you know, set my bets off the side. Don't parlay yeah, anything. Uh-huh. But if I was rolling and I had to keep rolling, they wouldn't let me stop. I'll tell you right now, it is not even a question. Pee your pants. <laughs> yes. Brag about that for the rest of your life to everybody That's- you know. I would bring that up to people who don't even know what craps is. Yeah, I had to pee my pants because I could not leave that roll. Right. I mean, who's going to fault you? That's right. And it's just water, really. And then you go up to the room and put new pants on. You got a great story the rest of your life. Somebody comes up to the table. Oh, hi. How are you? Where are you yeah. from? You immediately yeah. say, you know, I peed my pants once at a craps table. <laughs> right. I mean, and you know how people always say, oh, yeah. Yeah, they make a joke like, oh, I'll just fill this bottle up. I got to go so bad. <laughs> no, just pee your pants. You're not taking time to like get your beer bottle, dump your beer out and then pee in it. First of all, that's hard to do. <laughs> that's right. With that. Yeah, subtly. Yeah. yeah. Second of all, just pee your pants. You don't, no one's going to get you in trouble. Good. Right. right. It's not illegal. Yeah. Well, There's no. I- if I guess you, not. I don't know. No, if you pulled it out and peed, maybe <laughs> okay, that's illegal. It. But if it's still in there and you're, you're just, oh, I'm old. <laughs> I know, yeah, my pants. Right. Or you could be like that lady that just wears the diaper to the casino. <laughs> that's yeah. a good idea too. <laughs> just in case. All right. So I guess we have another uh, another T-shirt. Just pee your pants. Just pee your pants. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what. When I get old, and that that's approaching. Yeah. Very, when? Very fast. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to start wearing a diaper all the time. People ask us, well, I don't really need it, but you know, what if I'm in the middle of a hot roll and I got to <laughs> pee? <laughs> that's good. That's, you know, maybe that's the whole new thing. It's be prepared. It's like, oh, did I get to answer your question, T, we just wear diapers yeah. <laughs> because eventually it's going to happen. Right. Eventually, you know, eventually to I'm going to be it. on that heater. That's just never going to end. God, can you imagine four hours? Oh no, I mean, it's crazy. It's yeah. cra- even yeah. an hour and a half. Oh yeah. <laughs> you're, you know, your kids and Cub Scouts. Look, you got to be prepared for things. And <laughs> wear a diaper at all times. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's hear a Macau trip report from Ian. Mark and Dr. Mike, this is Ian from Florida, although I'm calling you from Macau, China right now. I thought I'd call in and leave some notes about Macau for people that might be interested in going to Macau. Staying at the Wind Palace, it is super duper nice. It was about $200 a night. Ate at the steakhouse last night, it was about $125. So if you come to Macau, bring your money. The casinos are all in walking distance of each other on each island. So there's a couple of different islands. And so I'm at the Wind Palace now. I walk to the MGM and do a couple of others. They have the Parisian, which is kind of like a knockoff of the Paris Hotel, and then the Venetian, which is the Venetian, uh, and a couple of others. The minimums here are ridiculous. Uh, Mark, you and I can't gamble here. Dr. Mike, you can gamble here. The minimums are like 
a thousand Hong Kong dollars. Uh, they use two different currencies, the Macau Pataka or the Hong Kong dollar, but everybody uses Hong Kong dollars. A thousand of those is like a hundred and twenty five dollar minimum for uh, blackjack. Now I have seen some tables for like five hundred or three hundred. I haven't seen any one hundreds yet, which is what I'm looking for right now. But uh, you, you can imagine it, three hundred or about forty dollars as your minimum bet. Uh, you can go through some money pretty quickly. So I'm still looking around. So I looked around for craps for you guys. I don't really play craps, but I know you do. There are not a lot of craps tables here, but there are some. So they have some of the Parisian at Studio City. And the guy I was talking to last night at the restaurant said they just added it at the MGM. The lowest minimum I could find was 200 Hong Kong dollars, which is about $25 um, as the minimum. And um, those were actually full, but they were full of more like Western people, as you might imagine. They have a lot of Baccarat. Like I used to think that Baccarat was the blackjack of Asia, but it's that's an understatement. Baccarat is everywhere. Nobody plays anything else, really. Um, they have Sikpo, um, but they have Sikpo on layouts that looks like roulette. So you place your uh, bet on what looks like a roulette table, and I, I don't know exactly how you win or how you play Sikpo, but there you go. The roulette, what looks like roulette we, uh, wheels is really a Sikpo table. They also have roulette, but again, those uh, minimums are crazy. Uh, not a lot of slot players. Uh, they have full Baccarat, where you actually touch the cards. I'm used to mini Baccarat, and most people are as well. And I'm really surprised at how these people like mutilate these cards when they pick them up and uh, throw them at the dealer. So that's just about it. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope to see you soon. I'm out from Macau, China. Good. Thanks, Ian. Ian actually followed up with an email, too, with a, a uh-huh. couple of more things. One of the things he said was, the gamblers here are very serious, and they don't really drink at all at the table. Yeah, I've heard that. Well, yeah, you know, the guys on the 88 Days to Macau podcast right. mentioned when they were there that, yeah, it was just so much different from Vegas. It was a lot harder to get alcohol. There were only a few bars in the casinos, and people really weren't drinking right. at the tables. Well, gambling is a part of their culture. Sure, it's sure. It's a serious it's a, thing. Yeah, it's a different it's a, culture. It's as far a as different as culture. They look at gambling in a different light than we would mm-hmm. here in the States. Yeah. And he also said that stadium gambling is really big there. Yeah, I'm says, surprised about that. Bigger than Vegas. He says the minimums are 100 Hong Kong dollars, which would work out to about $13 American, yeah. which is pretty high for stadium gambling. For stadium, you know, usually stadium yeah. gambling, at least here in the States, is lower than you would find it typically at a table. I know out here at Barone, it's $3, right? Right. So. Yeah, well, because they're the casino's spending less in... In overhead, overhead. personal. Personnel and stuff, right. yeah. Personnel and stuff, so yeah. they can lower those limits and still make a you know mm-hmm. a good profit margin. Right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. We someday should go there. I I have mixed feelings about that. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to, but I don't know how much I'd enjoy it. The, well, the thing is, I'm sure we would enjoy it, but everything that goes with it, the long plane, plane ride, ride right. and you know everything else that's kind of involved, I'm yeah. sure we would enjoy. Craps is once not we're a big there. deal there. That's yes, like the other thing too. We definitely, you know, how long would you like to sit at a sick bow table, or <laughs> you know, I mean, and, and gamble 125 dollars? <laughs> yeah, per hand. hand. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next up is August. Hi guys, it's August from Bath. Um, I haven't called in in a while, and I just had a little report for you guys. So I started giving Tioga more play because I was getting better free play. So I stopped going to Seneca for a while, and I used to get $25 free play, maybe 50 match play, and like $60 free slot play. And my offers came in for March and April, and it went from whatever, $100 free play on average to $800. So I'm going to start playing there again. Crazy increase. So yeah, competition breeds good for the consumer. So for people out there that have multiple casinos to go to, that's something to think about. And I just had one other experience at Tioga that made me switch. I had a um, a pickup for a gift card, and I went and got it. And then I called. They called me on Tuesday and said, "Hey, you still need to pick up this gift card." So I thought it was something else. So I came in and got it, and then I I left the casino. I went to a restaurant next, uh, sort of attached. And my host came in and said, oh, it looks like you already picked this up. And I was like, okay. They called me and said I had another one. And she was like, see, right here. And she pulls out this yellow legal pad and shows my name with a line through it, showing that I had already picked it up. And so she was just, she was like, yeah, I'm going to need that back. And I had already taken the gift card out of the package. And I wonder what they would have done if I had left. Would they have called me? It was just kind of weird getting and offer and then having it revoked. I'm not sure how many people have experienced that. 
And you know what he should have said? <laughs> this is a printing error. <laughs> exactly. It's obviously a printing error because who would who would draw a line through my name? <laughs> I love that That's it's just ridiculous. a legal path. <laughs> See? See? See, there's your name, <laughs> and, there's and there's a line, a line through it. <laughs> yeah. It's never good if someone draws a line through your name. <laughs> he actually got called. Yeah. He may, I, you know, I, I got to give him credit for not making a, a big stink about it because, yeah. shoot, I mean, hey, you called me and yeah. said I needed to pick this up. <laughs> right. I was being responsible <laughs> right. and reacting to you. Call. Yeah, maybe it was a five thousand dollar gift card. Or maybe, yeah, maybe it was back. something like that. That's the printer <laughs> error. So that was a little funny. And then uh, so I was playing poker last night, and I just wanted to share the last hand right before I went up and went to bed. It was a four way all in, and I had Jack nine, and the flap comes up Jack nine, so I've got top two pair. Great. I get to showdown, and another guy has Jack nine, so we ended up chopping the pot. But that was a pretty wild hand to finish the night. Yeah, it feels like my luck's turning around. I'm starting to do some force racing. Yeah, there's a lot of free play offers. So for anyone that wants to join TVG or NYRA or any of those, you get usually get a deposit bonus. You deposit 200 and then, you know, you get 200 So you could do $200 pick four and just see what happens. Santa Anita has half a million dollar pools, usually late pick four. So worth a try. All right. See you guys. We have a TVG account. Right. And we would play the horses quite a bit for a while. They had this great deal going on where almost every week they would have one or two races where you would get your money back if you bet to win on a horse and it came in second or third. And so that was great. You know, right, we would, you know, yeah. make bets along here. That actually worked out great for oh, us. Oh, it worked out tremendous for us. We yeah. actually won money, right, you know, right. and, and we really weren't studying the horses that no, much. No, it just. Well, uh, eventually. And we weren't the only ones that were victims of this. We got a message saying, okay, you're no longer eligible for our promotions because it looks like all you're really doing is betting on the promotions. Right. Right? Yeah. And so you're taking advantage of the offer we're <laughs> offering you, and that's not right. <laughs> right. So it's like, what? Well, apparently there was quite a bit of backlash. In fact, our friend Todd Goddess, he canceled his account. Yeah, yeah. He just cashed out. No, I don't blame right? him. And then like the next day or two days later, oh, oh I, I think we jumped the gun and everybody yeah. got these messages again. Right. But you know, it's funny. We haven't played since then. No. Just, you know, it's like, eh, whatever. Yeah. So That's ridiculous, though. Here, we're going to make this offer to you, and if you take advantage of it, we're going to cancel it. <laughs> that's, right. that's kind that's, of it. And, that's and look, what we're going to do. Look, we were running the system. There's no question. We, yeah. we pretty much only bet on those races. Right. Because it's like, yeah, hey, we, we bet a few other times yeah, we did, on but, bigger races. But we were but, not studying the horses, so no. why would we bet on you know yeah, races right. we really didn't have right. any yeah, idea we were about betting unless there was on races that we picked a good horse. We knew it was a good horse. And if it got second or third, we got our money back. Yeah, we were happy. Yeah. And if it won, we won a little. Yeah, yeah. You know, there was very little <laughs> risk on our part. But it wasn't like we did anything wrong. I mean, they no, offered this to us, right? right? And there was never <laughs> any kind of, well, unless I missed some fine print, you know, that, yeah. hey, if this is all you do, right. you're out. You're out. Maybe <laughs> so, it was a printing error. You know, maybe it was. Maybe they printed it. There's a lot of printing errors of printing in this errors. world. Uh, they printed it was white font on white background. And so <laughs> yeah. I never saw it. <laughs> it was a color error. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Now, about this poker hand, I'll tell you, if you're all in with Jack-9 and there are three other players, even if you have top two pair, you're nervous, yeah, right? Because right. Jack-9, that's fairly coordinated, right? Might, somebody right. might be staying in for a straight or you know, already have trips or something like that. Right. So I would not feel comfortable. So I'm glad, August, that you actually uh, were able to get some of that pot. <laughs> but I have to say... What are you doing playing Jack Nine? <laughs> I'm sorry, I, the, Jack Nine. You know, maybe to a new player, so, oh, Jack Nine. That's yeah, a, that's a that makes a straight. Mark. Oh God, I don't know. Maybe he was in a blind. Maybe yeah. they were suited and he was late position. But there were two players playing Jack, Jack Nine Knight. at that table. Yeah, all right? right. So I have a question about uh, yeah, Jack Nine. You got to. He maybe, did say it was the last hand of the night. Oh, that's true. Maybe they were just saying, "Well, I got to stay in no matter what I'm dealt." Yeah, I'm just gonna stay in. You know, right. it's the last hand. I'm going to bed. All right, all right, August. I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> all right. One final call. Hey, Mark and Doctor Mike. Uh, thanks again for the work you guys do on the pod. Just quick questions. We're getting up on March Madness. I know you can bet futures for teams to win the whole tournament, but I haven't seen either online or in my trips to Vegas for betting teams just to make the Final Four. I think that would be an interesting bet um, and not have to worry about teams winning at all and you get those underdog teams that make it to the Final Four. I think it'd be kind of neat. I don't know if you guys have seen that or heard that or thoughts on it on that as a possibility. So 
Thanks again. Have a good day. During the regular season, typically you can bet that a team will win the championship. Right. You know, during the regular season. Win it all. Right. Yeah, they'll have future bets. You can bet that a team will make the final four, but you usually can't make that bet until the brackets have been determined. Right. So that Sunday where they fill it all out, where they come up with the 68 teams, at that point... Well, I that, know you can. I was looking today. Yeah. You can bet that yeah. a team will make the final four. Well, that makes sense if you think about it. Because prior to the brackets being set, what would an odds maker set the chance of somebody making a final four? Because they don't know who they're going to have to get through to get to the final four. Sure, yeah. I mean, that's so another So once thing the brackets too. are set, an odds maker can say, well, this team has an easy road. Because they some of the brackets are definitely easier than others. Sure, sure. You know, just the way it's set up. Yeah. And so some guy will say, well, you know, this is going to be a lot easier for this team to get to the final four, so we're going to set the odds at this. Prior to that, it'd be very hard for an odds maker to determine. Well, I guess that could be true, but at the same well, time, it, it would be hard for them to determine if a team's going to go all the way or not, too. I mean, well, th- yeah, that's more of a, I think, a longer crapshoot. So let's say a good team. Sure, sure. Let's say okay. like this year, uh, Arizona is not ranked super high, but they played very, very good the last two or three weeks. Yeah. And they're kind of a dark horse to advance to the final four. Now, what bracket they got into and everything, an odds maker would say, yeah, you know, they're actually playing pretty good. So it would be easier to set an odd now than it would have been three weeks ago. Well, I definitely agree with you there. When they were playing there. terrible, and they might not even even have made the tournament. Yeah. So they're a perfect example of why they would wait. I'm thinking that some of it is, too, they just wouldn't get a lot of action on a bet like well, that. Well, that's, that's People probably, like to make the big bet. Oh, right. they're going to win the whole thing. Yeah. So That's probably some of it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, yeah, March Madness. You know, we didn't talk about it on the last episode. And when yeah, this I episode... Know I know. When this episode posts, it'll be the first round in the right. round of uh, 64. Right. So, yeah. I mean, we always talk about how this is the greatest uh, time for what, sports. We love it. We love this time because baseball's winding down the preseason. So mm-hmm. baseball yeah. season starting March 29th, I think, is the Pottery's opening day, okay. 28th or 9th. Uh-huh. And then we got March Madness, so there's basketball to watch. Mm. Th- this first week is insane because well, you got Thursday, fantastic. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I love coming like, home here on the West yeah. Coast. We come home from work. The games are going till 10 o'clock. Oh, yeah. my gosh, you're on the East yeah, Coast. You I can watch basketball times, till like 1 in the morning. Right. I, a lot of times, I don't get home till 8. <laughs> yeah. You know, in a normal night, there's a lot of sports is done even yeah. baseball sometimes except for maybe the Padres yeah. you know all the games are done but I can get home at eight and still watch two yeah. basketball games well and San Diego State is oh on a God. tear they won the Mountain West Championship which right. was the only way they were going to get into the tournament yeah three and weeks ago if you had said to me they were going to be in the tournament I would have I would have said I know. you were out of your they've, mind they've won nine in a row and so we're very excited about that they beat Nevada who was ranked 22nd or 23rd depending on which poll you look mm-hmm. at twice and not only beat them I mean they spanked them it yeah, was wasn't Great. even close. Yeah, just fantastic. They, they hammered them. Well, I let me say this. A few listeners have made bets for us on the Aztecs, San Diego State Aztecs, to win the whole thing. Okay, I'm not so, saying that's a no, good thing. No, hey, but <laughs> I we, appreciate we, it. I, we do want to thank everybody who's done that for us. If it does yeah. happen, oh my gosh, it's going to oh, be a yeah. miracle. It'll and, be a miracle. It'll be great. But thank you for that. I'll tell you what. Seriously, now I'm not, and I am not joking. If it did happen, if the Aztecs made the Final Four, I would not be all that surprised. Three weeks ago, I wouldn't have said this. They are playing so good right now. They are right now, yeah. And they're coming together as a team. Trey Kell is playing well. I mean, they seriously could do some damage. Now, that said, they probably lose to Houston in the first round. Yeah, it's good. But <laughs> but if they beat Houston, they have a chance against Michigan maybe mm-hmm. to beat Michigan. Right. I don't know. I You know, if you're filling out a bracket right now... Think about that. All right. Well, unfortunately, when this posts, the yeah. tournament will have already started and the brackets will already late. have to be in. And, oh, and, and we, San Diego State may have already lost at this point when people but, are listening. Yeah, when but, people uh, listen. Yeah, yeah, so. Well, I think the game's at 4.20 our time okay, tomorrow. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah you'll post right. it a yeah, little before that. that. Yeah, I'll do before that, yeah. And so I'm planning on winning the $1 billion. That, oh, that, good. Okay, where you yeah. get the perfect bracket. Yeah, yeah good luck to you, sir. Yeah, good. Good. Well, I mean, someone's got to do it eventually. No, no, that's not true. No. No? No, Seriously? You go a thousands of years and it won't happen. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me. Oh, you mean so um Buffett is not just throwing his money away. No, he's not. He's that a crazy, <laughs> crazy Buffett, crazy Warren Buffett. It's Jimmy yeah. Buff. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! It's really it's Warren Buffett. Oh uh, yeah, I thought it, it was is. Jimmy. Oh Buffett. okay, yeah. You're thinking I'm going to take advantage of this guy. <laughs> yeah, he's I just could, too cash. To... <laughs> Doctor Mike could wager a billion because nobody's ever going to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's okay? true. Yeah, I'll put up everything I have after right. San Diego State wins the tournament. <laughs> yeah, who had that right? <laughs> <laughs> Some things coming up. We want to remind everybody about Gamble Palooza. Speaking 
speaking of 420, it's going to be on April 20th that weekend there. And nice. I know I've been uh, corresponding with Vito, and he's got some great ideas for that event coming up. So that's the first thing. Then don't forget ZorkFest, May 25th through the 27th. Use promo code ZorkBet, Z-O-R-K-B-E-T, for $10 off. And then following that, immediately following that, is 360 Vegas Vacation 6. And just announced since our last episode, there is going to be a charity craps tournament on that Friday night, May 25th at 10 p.m. It's going to be right after the Zorkfest VIP dinner. It is a charity craps tournament to benefit Pangea Educational Development, which is a charity that Adam, a.k.a. Vegas fanboy, a.k.a. travel fanboy, uh-huh. is very involved in. And what, did the, what is the charity So do? it's a nonprofit organization committed to empowering schools and unifying communities through the development of sustainable educational change in Uganda. Oh, nice. So a good cause. Good. That's also on the Travel Zork website under ZorkFest. You can sign up right now. It's going to be a private craps tournament. They're going to have professional dealers from Treasure Island. It's going to be a single craps table with the pit boss dealers, everything. Nice. And also... It'll be either before or after the tournament. I think it's going to be before the tournament. We are going to provide craps lessons. I think we'll do it kind of like we did a couple years ago at Golden Gate uh-huh. for VIMP, where I maybe will just kind of be in the middle and explain, and you can kind of be on the outer edge talking to people. And come up, and if you're a complete beginner, we'll start from the basics. If everybody there has maybe played a little bit, we can talk about some of the minutia of craps. But there's going to be uh, that as well. So we're very much we looking forward to that. We definitely need to do that before the tournament. Oh, yeah. Because that- when the tournament starts, they'll be like, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting all my money on 12. That's right. right. Yeah. No, we'll do it beforehand. And then yeah. when the tournament starts, it's like, well, Mark, what are those bets that you're making? You didn't <laughs> uh, tell us about those. Oh, don't worry about those. <laughs> yeah. yeah, uh, uh, yeah uh, never <laughs> you mind. don't need to know yeah, that. Send them. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. Hey, we want to thank some people for some PayPal donations. First of all, Bill, he's a new listener. We actually got a nice email from him, and he had some questions about hosts that yeah. we will talk about on a future we will episode. Talk about yes, that. definitely. Also from Chaz, he says, "Dear Mark and Doctor Mike, I absolutely love your show. Please keep it up. Love and kindness from your pal in Canada. Thanks very much." Also from Todd and Amanda Goddess. They say, we haven't been gambling much lately, so we haven't called in, but that changes this weekend. Hashtag Vegas, baby. baby. Nice. Nice. Hopefully they did well. I think it was probably the last weekend. And finally, a PayPal donation from Abram. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it, everybody. Hey, be sure to check out our TV listings showing all the gambling-related shows coming up within the next two weeks. We update those listings every Wednesday using a customized program that searches through all the raw American TV data. Just go to youcanbetonthat.com slash TV dash listings. We'd love to hear from you. Call our voicemail hotline at 951-292-4377. That's 951-2-WAGERS. Or you can email us at youcanbetonthat at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at youcanbetonthat and on Facebook at facebook.com slash youcanbetonthat. Finally, please go to your favorite podcast app and write a review on us. We love getting your feedback. And before I hand it over to you, Mike, too, one more thing about this tournament. We need at least 20 participants in order for it to go through. If we okay. can't get at least 20, we're not going to be able to do it. All right, So if, if you plan on doing it, sign up as soon as you can, Mike. I've already signed the two of us up, so we're, we're in. in. We're yeah, in. Yeah. yeah. All right. What so, do you got for us? Well, I just got to say, I mean, this is a wonderful time of the year for us. <laughs> I'm going to Vegas in April That's right. at the beginning, mm-hmm. Connecticut at the end. Yep. Back to Vegas in May. Mm -hmm. We got sports up the Mm yin-yang. The Padres are predicted to win 142 games this year. Really? That's good. I think that's better than our (laughs) April Fool's episode. How many do we say there? 120, I think. So, so, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, ESPN picked them to win 66 games. All right. Uh, And I'll tell you what. Bet the over. Okay. I know I've said this before, but yeah. they are going to be closer to 500 than people think. Okay, good. They're, Glad to hear you say they're that. They're a decent team, and I mean that in all sincerity. All right. Now, your track so, record is just so I know, on these predictions. I know. So. Well, because i betting with my heart yeah, when it there comes you go. to that. All right. But, you know, when it's not my heart, I can tell you winners. You know that. <laughs> okay. You know I can. Well, I guess that's true. Oh, you know, in yeah. fact, you picked the Indy 500 winner last sure. year. Yep. And we need to bet that again coming out of yep. Memorial Day weekend. We will. Yeah. We'll bet that okay, again. Good. Yeah, I, got, yeah. I got some insight into okay, that, Okay, good, too. good, good. But anyway, seriously, we've got so much coming up, all the stuff and everything. And so, you know, life is good. we got sports. we got yep. gambling. That's great. Yep. Families are <laughs> fine. Stuff, Everyone's yeah, healthy. Good. Yep. I hope everyone else is staying healthy. Yep. So forget about all the crap in the world and focus on the important stuff. Yeah, forget about all the crap and think about the craps. craps. Uh, <laughs> all right. Thanks for listening. <laughs> good night. Mike? 
Mark, that was wonderful. I had no idea you were so talented. The audience is going to love you.